Oh, didn't see you there. Just before we get into this new weekly series from Felix called First Serve, make sure you like and subscribe and love all of the videos. Hello everybody, it's Felix from the Tennis Brothers here and this is going to be my weekly series or show where I talk about things that are going on in the tennis world, so it's kind of tennis news, um, my life behind the scenes of Tennis Brothers. I named it First Serve because I thought serving is what you do in tennis and it's serving you information about the tennis world, so I thought that was kind of a good play on words. If you're wondering what's on my desk here, I chose a couple things that I have on my desk in my room, such as like a tennis book, tennis magazine here, a Tennis Brothers cap, a trophy that I won, and this thing I got for Christmas with my name on it, it's like a letter stamper. So I think these are kind of objects that are quite cool. So I'm, firstly I'm going to talk about my year to come as 2018. On the last video you guys asked me what I wanted to do in 2018 and my goals so I'm going to talk a little bit about that now. Moving into under 16s is quite a step for me, I've been in under 14s for two years now and I think it's just the calibre of players and the level because I'm not that big for my age. There are a lot of players that are taller, faster, stronger than me. I'm going to have to work double as hard to keep up with them in a sense. But I obviously have played up, so I've played already under 16s and 18s tournaments. I also playing Tennis Europe's or ITF's with the balance of German tournaments as well because the German tournaments, I really like them because they're close to home, they're really like with my family, but also I need to get a bit of you know international tennis and European players to kind of show that level. One thing I wanted to address was playing tournaments in Germany and obviously the balance between them and Tennis Europe and ITF events. I like to play a lot of tournaments in Germany because they're close to home with the family and I've played those for the last three years, but obviously moving up, I need to kind of play more ITFs and I think the balance between that would be quite essential, maybe play two ITFs and then two German tournaments. Uh, comment down below if you've ever played a Tennis Europe or ITF tournament, because obviously the qualifying is extremely hard in ITFs and obviously Tennis Europe's as well. So comment down below if you think I should do that or play more ITFs or Tennis Europe's. So another thing I want to change is my tennis racket. At the moment I have the Wilson Blade 98S with the counter veil. I want to change that, I've been trying out some rackets, for example the Wilson Ultra, it's got a different string pattern, this one's got the 18x16 but that one's got the 18x20 not allowing for as much spin, so I'm going to try that out and try out some other rackets and see which ones I like, but we're obviously staying with Wilson because we've got the another year contract, which I'm really pleased about, so this racket, I'm trying out the Pro Staff, a heavier version of this racket, and the Ultra, they're all a bit heavier because this is the 294 gram version so I feel like I need, I need a bit heavier version to get a bit more power on the court. So there's a poll up in the top right, choose which racket you would think I should choose out of the Wilson Ultra, the, the Tour version so it's a bit different, uh, the Pro Staff and the, the heavier version of the Wilson Blade. There's a poll just up there, go and do it right now and I'll see which one wins. In the last video, you said that Roger Federer was going to be number one in the world by June 2018, um, and that's why I'm going to talk a little bit about him in this video. For Christmas, I got this book, so about Roger Federer, written by Clayton Jeffries, here. And it basically just talks about his life. It says, the inspiring story of one of tennis's greatest legends as I'm sure all of you will agree. Roger Federer's 2017, in my opinion, was amazing. He ended up second behind Rafael Nadal. He was the oldest person to finish second um, and record 11 times where he's come in the second and first at the end of the year rankings. So Roger Federer's 2017 was, in my opinion, amazing, one of his best tennis years yet. Um, a lot of people thought that he was gonna retire or should retire but this has actually been one of his strongest years. He hasn't played all the tournaments because he didn't want to get injured, he didn't want to hurt his body, and he obviously wants to play in the years to come. But he ended up second and he didn't even play all the tournaments, which shows he did really well in each single event. He had a 52 to five win-loss ratio, which is about 91.23%, uh, which is actually amazing in my opinion, playing all these high-level players on the tour 
with his age, 36 years old, it's not not very easy, but he's he's managed to do it. Also, he won the Australian Open five times before, and that's obviously the first Grand Slam that's got going to be played this year. He beat Rafael Nadal again in the final last year, and I find he's, his chances are actually very good. Some players have pulled out um, or are injured, but still might play. So let's have a look, how successful can he actually be in the next six months? So the main Grand Slams are obviously the Australian Open and the French Open and Wimbledon. And he won Wimbledon and the Australian Open last year and didn't even play the French Open obviously because it's quite demanding for the body. So he has no points to defend. However, the Australian Open and Wimbledon are a lot of points that he has to defend. And even if Nadal gets to the final and Federer is in the final as well, the positions can't change because he has to defend his points and obviously Nadal can jump, like get even more points if he wins. But Roger Federer has won the Australian Open five times before, so I think he has it in him. I think he can start the year off with a bang and then leave out the French Open if he thinks it's too demanding for his body and then come back stronger at Wimbledon. He's won that eight times, so that's obviously, you can see it's one of his strongest surfaces. So I, I think, to be honest, he's got a good chance of becoming number one if he plays the French Open. If he doesn't, then he has to win a lot of these early tournaments. Last year he had a really good start, I think this year as well. But he lost to two players in the top ten the whole of last year, which is actually amazing. He lost to three players who were out of the top ten. So if you think about that, he, his performance against top ten players is actually much better than, well better than his performance against non-top 10 players which actually shows how he performs on the tour against those top players and his win percentage is unbelievable, like 91% because he took that time off and didn't allow his body to corrode or to get injured and I think that's really clever of him and he still has a really big chance of becoming 2018 like winner, like first place in the rankings. So in summary, my prediction is that Roger Federer will be number one in June, by June 2018. Uh, there's a poll up in the top right again. Do you think he'll be number one? So next week's video is going to be on the Australian Open. Comment down below if there's a viewpoint or angle you want me to kind of talk about and give my opinion on. Remember to like and subscribe and there'll be a link down in the description to our giveaway that we're holding right now. If you want to know a bit more about what's going on there, go to the last video and watch it right now. If you enjoyed this first serve video, subscribe and click the bell icon to be notified when the next first serve comes out. See you in the next video.